Hey guys, Hikara Cosplay here. Today I wanted to talk about panels. Panels are a very important and staple part of conventions. Doesn't matter what kind of convention you're going to be going to, comic book, sci-fi, mixture, video game, anime, whatever have you. Panels are very important. There's all kinds of panels. You can go watch anime or other TV shows, you can listen to cosplayers talk about how to cosplay, you can go see guests like voice actors or other actors kind of talk about the TV shows or writers. And, Pretty much almost anything you could ever think of, there's been a panel. Or, even better, if there hasn't, you could run a panel. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about today, is about running panels. I've done a lot of panels at smaller to medium-sized conventions, um, more on the small side. Whenever I go to medium-sized and larger conventions, I typically don't like to do panels as much because I want to focus more on the masquerade or my own personal time, but at smaller cons I really do like to host panels. All of my panels have been related to cosplay, makeup, music videos, pretty much all around cosplay. I have helped host the cosplay makeup panel done by Lyra and South Cobrezia. I have hosted the CMV cosplay music video panels a couple times. Um, we've done things like what I wish I knew when I started cosplay slash troubleshooting cosplay. It's kind of like almost the same thing. It was pretty much just like a step up from basic how to cosplay kind of a panel. So those are kind of like the main panels that I've run before. I've done it a couple times. I've done some of them multiple, multiple times. I really do enjoy running panels. It's, you know, kind of a nice moment to sit down, talk about my opinions or how I do things, and share my experiences and lessons that I've learned over the years in cosplay to other cosplayers or people hoping to cosplay. And it really does warm my heart whenever, one, I see people show up, two, when I see people taking notes, and three, whenever people ask questions, especially when people take notes, actually. that's like super flattery when people take notes at my panels. So I've done panels at Genericon, very small college con, Castle Point Anime Convention, very small to medium-ish college con. Also done it at Anime Fan Fest, which was small, medium-ish, like it's, it's kind of one of those weird sizes. I helped host at DerpyCon like the very first year and that's another small con so I've mostly done panels at smaller cons. First off with a panel you have to think of a good idea. You want it to be something that you think people want to come to and something maybe that hasn't been done before or especially something that you know a lot about. If you know a lot about Lolita fashion go ahead do a panel on Lolita like how to maybe start Lolita or maybe advanced Lolita, Lolita for beginners. Like, once you have a broad topic like, oh I want to do something on cosplay, oh I want to do something on makeup, oh I want to do something on Lolita, oh I want to do something on anime. Once you have the broad topic, then you have to funnel it into a specific, like basic, like cosplay for beginners or something like that. Or advanced cosplay or armor making. If you try and make it too broad, like just cosplay, it's going to be confusing. People might not get as much information as they may be coming for, and you might run out of time. I, that's a problem I've run into where I've tried to make it too broad and I've run out of time, I didn't have time to put it all together. Next up is friends. It's fun to do a panel, especially fun to do one with friends. Plus it's a little less scary when you've got other people sitting up there with you, and it's nice to have a broad amount of ideas and skill sets, especially when it comes to something like cosplay. Like you ha might have someone who knows a lot more about armor building than you do, or someone who knows more about makeup or wigs than you do, so it's good to have kind of like that broad skill set. For the actual physical presentation of the panel, typically I like to do a PowerPoint. Some panels don't do PowerPoints, you can't get away without a PowerPoint. I just personally like to because it makes it easier for people who are taking notes, especially if it's a very information heavy panel, like my cosplay music video panel or the makeup panel that Sopko and Lyra Bird developed originally or pretty much any sort of really information heavy panel. 
it's good to have a PowerPoint because it helps for the visual learners to see that and they, it makes it easier to write notes to be honest. And if, frankly, if I'm going to come into a panel to really learn about something, I'm going to want to like see some sort of visual representation. Especially if it's, you know, a visual craft like cosplay or you're talking about makeup. It's good to have pictures up there as well to kind of help illustrate your point. Now, I am a business major in college. I make PowerPoints all the time and I'm a PowerPoint nerd. I love to make PowerPoints. I find any excuse to make a PowerPoint and a lot of my classes have actually like taught me how to successfully speak and how to make PowerPoints. So I, I'm not to say that I know what I'm talking about, but this is just kind of sort of what I've learned through experience and through millions of other presentations that I've had to do, not just for cons. One, you want to time yourself. There is such a thing as making too many slides. So time yourself to make sure that you haven't jam-packed too much information and allow 10 minutes for questions and then 10 minutes in the beginning and 10 minutes at the end for setup and for takedown. Obviously you may not need that much, but here's why. Sometimes, a lot of the times actually, people don't realize Okay, so my panel ends at 5. Here's a funny thing, most schedules, they have it so the next panel starts at 5. You need to leave somewhere between 5 to 10 minutes for the other person to set up. Oh, well my panel ends at 5. Honey, mine starts at 5. So please, I need you out of there or at least give me some space while you're answering questions for me to set up. I actually find it very rude when people, um, aren't ready to go, right one, the other one starts, and because of things like that, my panel starts late and I have less time to talk about my stuff because you took too long to take down your panel. So please, out of common courtesy, leave 10 minutes, the last 10 minutes of your panel, open just to help the other person who's after you set up so they can start their panel on time find it very rude and very self-centered when people don't realize or just say, oh, well, mine ends at such and such time. Honey, mine starts at that time. So please, don't waste my time. Don't run into my time. Some really good cons will schedule 15 minutes in between, like actually real 15 minute lag time in between, and I really appreciate that. Some panels go over time or some panels need to set up very very annoying just that's like my biggest gripe whenever hosting panels when the other person hasn't gotten out in time or starts to run over because that's my panel time okay please I just I've had a lot of problems with starting late because of that it's just a personal pet peeve of mine um, and again save like 10 minutes for questions and answering Tip, and that's like 30 minutes worth of content, 30 minutes of takedown setup. Obviously, you don't need exactly 10 minutes, so you won't, but you want to schedule like the PowerPoint within like 30 minutes. Because again, what if somebody is taking forever to take down? What if this, that, and the other thing? And you can always stretch it out too. I always keep my phone with me and I constantly check my phone for the time to make sure that I'm on track with the panel. So that's also really good. I'm really bad about keeping it simple and I technically run, I usually run my mouth a lot and talk stories. I think it's pretty obvious in the fact that I do 20 minute vlogs instead of five minute vlogs. Really bad about that. But I can't help it. I want to have a lot of context, too much context. It's a problem. I don't care, whatever. Again, keeping an eye on time is really good. 10 minutes for questions. If the panel's really good, people won't need to ask questions and so that's usually pretty nice. I always make sure that I say to people before the panel starts, please don't blurt out. Please don't blurt out in the middle of the um, panel like while I'm talking, it'll make it run a lot smoother. Except if it's like a really, really small con. I did forget I also hosted an NGIT mini con one year and that was very, very, very small. It was like more like a conference room. I will be more accepting of like a more interactive discussion kind of based panel 
If it's a bigger room, like Genericon has huge rooms for panels, or like Anime Fan Fest, like if I have to use a microphone, if I'm using a microphone to talk, please don't interrupt me. If I'm not using a microphone to talk, then by all means it can be a more discussion based. This also goes for you too, panel goers. Please don't interrupt the panelist unless they say it's okay to make it more of a discussion. Because it does kind of eat up time when people do that and sometimes those questions can be answered in the PowerPoint and sometimes it's like, yes, we've all had stories where we burned ourselves with hot glue. This isn't your panel, please let me talk. But back to the PowerPoints and the physical speaking aspect of it, I've learned a lot about public speaking through conventions and panels. I've gotten a lot better because of it. It's just, it's, I'm always nervous though. I'm always anxiety ridden whenever I kind of do this stuff. So it's, it's kind of a practice slash you kind of almost never go get over it, but you can become more comfortable about it. Just remembering that these people are convention goers just like you. They would probably be just as terrified as you to speak. And remember that you're kind of sort of teaching them, that this is a teaching experience and a learning experience for both of you guys. Just breathe. I always pack snacks in case I feel like a little shaky, but the trick is to keep it loose. Don't be so stiff. Like sometimes I move around a little bit if I have the chance to stand up during a thing, like I'll move around a little bit. I try and crack jokes even though it's terrible. I try and be as loose and comfortable and laid back as possible. I try not to be too stiff and too professional because that I feel is sometimes makes me more nervous and it makes it for less of an interesting panel because let's face it, you don't want to listen to someone speak like this. You want someone to kind of be a little more comfortable, maybe not like shake their hands as much as I'm doing right now, but I'm just trying to be a little bit more laid back and carefree while I speak. As for physical PowerPoints, you want to make it simple, like you don't want to litter it with text unless you're doing something like a Lolita panel or, I don't know, CMB panel. I have actually gone to a Lolita panel before and it was very, very informative. Something where it's like you're listing off brand names, like a makeup brands or Lolita brands or something like that, like unless you're listing off physical brand names, then try not to litter your text. Speak it, don't type it. Keep each bullet point to seven words or less and then that way because the PowerPoint's more of a way to help guide you. The PowerPoint is more so there to assist you while you're speaking. Look at it for five seconds and go, okay yes I'm going to talk about curling wigs. It just says use heat for curly wigs or something like that. Curl wigs with heat. Curl wigs with heat. Four words, it's under seven, better than curl your wigs with heat using da 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 like that's a heat that just it makes the slide look very very cluttered you don't want a cluttered slide so say it says curl wigs with heat okay then i can sit there go okay yeah curl your wigs with heat you do so with this you want to do this that and the other thing unless of course i'm listing up brands like low-cost makeup brands, then I'll write down all the low-cost makeup brands or something like that. Want to keep it simple, not cluttered, because you're going to be talking about it anyway. You can elaborate with your speech. With photos, you want to typically keep it to one photo per slide unless you're doing like comparisons or you're listing off like a ton of examples like basic makeup characters who look like they don't wear makeup but you still need to wear makeup anyway, like maybe I'll put like a ton of couple pictures of examples, something like that. Typically, one photo per slide. Again, it's to keep it less cluttered. A pretty slideshow is a nice slideshow. Makes for a great presentation. That was a really crappy analogy, but you know what I mean. It just, it burns me as a business student to see bad PowerPoints. It really does! Luckily the panels that I've been to either didn't use a PowerPoint or when they did use a PowerPoint it was very nice. So I didn't want to launch myself to the front of the room and reformat their entire PowerPoint for them right at that moment. So that's usually also why I'm in charge of PowerPoints for our panels because I get a little crazy with PowerPoints. But again, 
looking up like business tutorials for how to do public speaking or PowerPoints and stuff like that can actually be very, very helpful. Going to panels and seeing how other people run panels is also very nice. And again, you don't want to sound like this and just keep talking and uh, like you just you don't want to be a monotone drone on and on because then that's going to be boring. The next up is advertising for your panel. Make sure that you advertise for your panel on all your social media, like your Facebook, your Tumblr, your Instagram. Just saying, if no one knows about the panel, no one's gonna go to the panel. With panels, things may go wrong, like you may have technical difficulties, always checking the AV equipment with the head is always really nice. I bought a VGA to HDMI cord adapter for my laptop because OneCon didn't have an HDMI cord. That's been really nice. Keeping ahead with the technical things, like requesting, oh, can I have an HDMI cord? Can I have three microphones? Like, it's good to be on top of the AV equipment because that's also really important, especially if you're doing a PowerPoint. And again, stay loose, make a nice PowerPoint. If you're not gonna do a PowerPoint, that's perfectly fine and acceptable. It's just usually better if you're doing an information-heavy panel because it makes it easier for people who are more visual learners to see and remember what they're hearing from you better and also for people who may want to take notes for later it may be easier for them. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this little vlog was to just kind of sort of talk about how I do panels and maybe help other people if they were thinking about doing a panel and hey, you never know, it's always worth a try to send in a panel request or submission or whatever to a small con and see what happens. I do think for panels, you do want to start small. If you are going to a super small con, go ahead, try it out, see what it's like. And then maybe graduate up to the bigger cons. So I hope that this is a very informational and helpful video for you and I hope this inspires some people to maybe do panels or whatever at cons and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!